always start with you. That's the state of the flyweight okay. division, right? You know, I mean, we always talk to you about it, but I know you follow follow the news. I mean, yeah. did you see Dana's comments the other day where it sounds like he said, I, I promise it's sticking around. What did what, you make of him? That was good. It was good just to get some uh, some kind of answer or thought, you know, that was going on about it. So, you know, they never said it was cut, but it looked like it was so everyone could see evidence. But to come out and say that was great. Even months before that, they said this next fight with Formiga would be a number one contender fight. So it was kind of like it's weird to have a number one contender fight in a division they don't plan sticking around. And then since then, they've been making fights, you know, with, with different guys, guys that lost, guys that won. Um, just, I guess, whoever's left since there's only a few of us last of the flyweights right now. But um, I think it's just building back up now. Number one contender saying it's staying around. All good signs. So for me, business as usual. I have a fight in front of me. Worry about that and, um, you know, handle things as they come. What, what is the state? I mean, we know that it's staying around, but Henry now is at 135 and now he's talking about 145 and now he's hurt. Like, what is the state of the That guy, what's the state of him is the question. Who knows? But, you know, he's kind of all over the place with that. But at the end of the day, he's a 125-pound champion. You know, he fought at 35 last. I think it would make sense to fight at 25 again. Um, I'm the only person um, of the contenders that he could fight. I'm the only one with history of him. Um, not only that, a win over him. So you'd figure he'd want to do that. The company would want to do that. Um, no offense to anyone that he called out or anyone, you know, that was a number one contender um, that made themselves number one contenders that night. Um, I just make the most sense with Henry. You know, we have a history, ultimate fighter, um, an amazing one of the best fights of the year, and his last loss is me. So, yeah, it makes sense to do that next. Obviously, always looking to the future, but uh, in the present, got to get past Farmiga. That's why you don't hear me raving and ranting about it because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I have a tough fight in front of me and a guy that actually lost a split decision to Cejudo in a close fight and has improved since then. So. His two best contenders are at flyweight, honestly. Um, a split decision loss and someone that beat him. So uh, this is a big fight for the division, and I think the rightful contender uh, um, comes out of this fight the winner. Sorry to make you harp on it, though, but when you're watching, he wins at 135. He is the champion in your weight class, but then he starts calling out like retired guys. <laughs> it was like, wild. What, what are you thinking <laughs> of that? Nothing surprises me from that guy anymore. It's just great to watch from a distance, you know. Um, it's fun. It's always something interesting. To be said, it's always something also, though, that in a way brings attention. There's always some kind of sound bite or some kind of meme or picture or something that that all attention, you know, at this point in our division and actually now the the, the two lightest divisions, you know, if you could just um, compound them together at, at flyweight and bantamweight, um, I think a lot's being done, a lot's being said. There's a lot of movement, a lot of talk regardless, you know, of, of how it's happening. So, you know, I think anybody in the media and fans know what he's doing. You know, he's calling out the biggest names and, you know, people that make sense, but or, or that don't make sense, but uh, they just don't make sense right now. Like, those are big names and great fights potentially, but in the state of the two divisions right now, like I said, there's no question that I'm the best fight for him. With Cejudo hurt uh, out for the rest of the year, and, of course, Demetrius gone from the division, do you think that the rest of the year is, an, and now that we know the flyweight division is going to stick around, do you think uh, the rest of the year is an opportunity for fighters like yourself, other flyweights, to establish themselves as the face of the division? And is that yeah, I think so. Just to continue to, just to continue to make faces, um, you know, potential stars and, you know, people that, that you look forward to seeing fighting. You know, I think they're making a lot of, of good um, fights now that are on the docket already, you know, matched up, Pantoja, Figueredo. You know, I think uh, Matt Schnell, Danger, like he's always like a good face that people are going to realize. And, you know, even if they brought some guys back that were cut, I think would be great now that, you know, things are a little more certain. But, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely uh, an opportunity to do that because there's not going to be probably a title fight before the end of the year um, to really, um, you know, bring, bring the attention. So, yeah, everybody else does what every fighter – in our division or not does is they try to fight for a name for themselves every day, fight off the prelims, you know, fight towards main events, fight towards, you know, people caring about them. Going back to the first Formiga fight, you, you finished that fight in the first round, but did you get, were you in the lineup to get the read on him that you anticipated or the second time around, 
are there other scenarios maybe you you anticipate that you didn't get a clear read on in the first first bite? Yeah, of course. It's it's kind of hard. I mean, obviously you're always happy. Like the preparation is there, and you're always happy to go in and finish a guy in two minutes, especially a top guy like for me again, not have to battle with him. But those are also the guys you're like, well, I don't need to fight him again. You know, the the odds are you're not going to knock him out in two minutes again. So, but I look forward to that in a way of like, now I get to just show some more things. So yeah, I didn't get to see everything by any means, but you know, it's it's nice to me. I didn't. I don't feel like I got lucky with it. I feel like all right. If you look at the fight with stand up, and I knocked him out. We didn't grapple. He's a black belt in jujitsu. I'd love to out grapple him. You know, I know that I can. You know, I think that's his best thing, and I think I'd beat him in in a grappling match as well. So, um, you got to expect there's going to be some um, some adjustments and a lot of things we didn't see in the first fight because the first fight was two minutes on the feet. So, funny enough about that fight, I just found out it was six years ago. I just was telling everybody I beat him two years ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how our brains work <laughs> in the sport. Like, everything was just the other day or whatever. And then uh, I was telling guys, yeah, I knocked him out like two years ago. Because, like, it's, it's a weird thing. You just, time flies, you know. I don't know when the first flyweight even fight started. Like, when the division came. I don't know what year that was. But, uh, yeah, someone was telling me that. And then <laughs> someone was like, yeah, you guys, exactly. And then someone was like, yeah, so you guys fought six years ago? And I was like what oh, I told everyone two years ago it's a big difference but yeah so there's there's gonna be I think a lot it's a whole different fight he's at different camps he's gotten better um, but at the end of the day you know we've done what we've done in the past in our careers um, for a reason you know like I've been at the top you know he's had a hard time getting there and you know I don't think it's anything you know really against him it's just different you know skill sets that you know you have to have at the top along well, those same lines as far as the timeline had such a long career as, as you know, an established you know, kind of star in the sport. Like, has it felt like a long career, or does it feel like you, know, you just started? Man, it's weird. Like, it feels like it when you talk about it, because there's so much to like talk about, honestly, and look back at it. Like, I just did a podcast the other day, and we started at the beginning. And I was like, man, this has been crazy. And like, you sometimes get younger guys talking to you, like you used to talk to uh, older guys. Okay. So then I'm kind of like, then I kind of look back on it. Um, in the moment, the action, like I said, like I thought I fought the guy two years ago. So it doesn't seem like a lot, like six years ago. So that 10 years doesn't seem like 10 years. It seems like five or whatever. Like it was just yesterday, you know, I was walking in to wherever I was, you know, WC or Faber's gym or meeting this person or that person. And, you know, and now we're just here. So. You know, but just try to stay grateful and appreciative of it every day. And every day I get to do it, you know, it's just a nice time. So I think that's why it flies by, because I just look at every day and it's just a new day. And it's nice. Like, even when I come in here today, it's just like, oh, this is cool. Um, get to come to this cool place, talk to you guys, and, like, work out after, do what I like, you know. So can we talk about that a little more? When you and I first spoke, you had recently relocated to Las Vegas. Yeah. Tell me how your life has changed being in a new city with a new team yeah just different um once again like in this sport everything is so individual that i don't think anything is better it's all about for the individual like you can't say this is better that's better like whatever is better for the person is good um i've been coming back and forth to vegas for nine years you know um i started training a long time ago with sean Tompkins. you know i passed through robert fallis um, I hate to be like morbid, but that's two dead coaches, <laughs> you know, I've passed through in nine years. So I've been in Vegas for a long time, meeting people, making things. And I made my life here. My wife has lived here since we met. So I was always coming back and forth. Even if I was training in SAC, I was visiting here, training, training, but like got to go do my training, training in SAC. So about five years ago, made the change and, uh, I couldn't be happier. The great thing about Vegas, um, just talking on the training level, like you say, the new team is, is it's new for me, it's different. I've been so used to like a super team at Alpha Mel and everything kind of spread out, a little more camaraderie and everything here with the PI involved. And you obviously have a home base, like for me is Extreme Couture, but I can kind of make my own schedule. I'm at the point, you know, with this place and establishing my career where I can get my coach and we can train here. I can get three partners and we can train here. So. It's nice because it's a little bit more on my terms. I don't have to say like, who's our coach? 
like I probably used, I had to used to at Alpha Male is like, who's our coach, but also like, what time is the practice? You know, who's train, who's running it? Like, I can kind of run all my own schedule. This place, UFCPI, has honestly been a blessing. Um, the coaches I've met have been a blessing. Um, all the people. So, like I said, it's just one of those things. I think Alpha Male is one of the greatest teams ever, but at a certain point when you do something, you know, 10 years, 11 years, something new is, is better. You know what I mean? So that's really what it comes to here. And then this is where my family life is as well. You know, with my wife, that's where, this is where we made a home, got married, got engaged, um, all that. So, and like I said, to, to square it down, like just the more I was in Vegas, the more I wanted to stay. So I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna stay there, it's great. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? The pressure doesn't lie in those things, in the win again, and the Cejudo stuff, like the, um, the external things. The pressure never lies in that stuff for me. Like, those are bonuses when I win and, and you know, make people proud. But going in, the pressure is more internal. Like, I'm trying to do my best here, so I obviously want to succeed, you know? And that's really all it comes down to, is going out there and fighting and performing like you can. And there's other motivations and everything, um, but it's not really those external, like they're positive, you know, the, the pressure is really, you know, it's a bonus when, when, when you, when you like hush it or you, you know, um, you perform and everything, but you don't think about, I don't think about that stuff going in. I think about kind of the fight in front of me and, uh, there's pressure every fight that I put on myself, you know, and succeeding, you know, chasing the title, you know, chasing everything I do and just trying to be the best at what I can do. Like. That's the pressure I put on myself. I don't. I don't feel pressure from other people. I feel more like inspiration from them. If that makes sense, like, like, uh, I get I get happier and more motivated to like make people proud than I do in like, oh my god, I better. These guys think I'm gonna do this, you know, and I need so I need to do it. Like I don't I don't succumb to pressure like that. Like even peer pressure, like that's not my thing. Like people can't make fun of me or like peer pressure me to do anything because I just like, it doesn't bother me. You know, I'm just comfortable with, with kind of whatever I am and whatever happens. It's all, sorry, it's all those same lines, but like you've basically been the number one contender like since the division started. So how, how have you been able to maintain focus and like not let somebody pass you or not have a, a letdown at some point? Yeah. And, like you, every single fight, somebody's gunning for you, you're not quite at the, the ch as champion, but like you're at that level every yeah. single fight. I'd actually like to say I've been a number one contender in two divisions for probably like eight years two. in two different divisions and been, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so that's just, that's just me, you know, bragging a little bit, <laughs> but that, but going back again and thinking about like how long stuff has been, like I was a number one contender at 35, even when the UFC and WC got combined and then became the number one contender at another weight class. And that was eight years ago. And I haven't dropped out of that one to two spot ever. So the question is, how does it feel with the guys like gunning at me like I that? Mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, you're, like you, every fight is like, okay, this is the fight to be <laughs> fight for a title almost. Like, yeah. You don't let somebody pass you up. Like you still are able to maintain the focus of doing this. You know what? It just comes, I think, from preparation is, is nothing changes for me from what I've been doing. Like I got to go in the gym every day and like the things that make those fights look like that, like it's easy to say, oh, well, he fought this time, fought this time, you know, got past that guy, got past that guy. But that honestly, the only reason that happens is because what I do every day for eight years, for nine years, um, the fights, you know, tell the tell of, of what I've been doing. But literally every day, a Wednesday, you know, I got to go in. And I'm not trying to get through practice. Like, I'm trying to win every single position every day. And it just comes from that, that preparation that you do every day. So I think that's why I've been able to do it. Like, I think about that every day. Like, I go into practice, and I don't feel like practicing, but I'm like, if I'm not winning every round against a guy not in the UFC or, you know, an amateur or something, like, how am I going to beat, you know, the number one contender guy that's gunning after me? 
and it's just been a consistent like long time like that like driving to practice and just knowing like you know you got to do this you got to be ready to do it and so then when push comes to shove in there I think um, that's why I've been able to succeed so long. It's clear that you're not looking past this fight at all but I mean if you win it's like an interim titles in order I mean we don't, we don't know what's happening with Henry you know his injury his you know what division he's going on do you feel like an interim title would make sense especially if you are trying to reestablish the flyweight division? Yeah it would be weird as far is I think in any other division they'd probably throw it right out there once the champ was injured once he was kind of stuck up but with the with our division and how small it is you know like there's one title fight to make me and Cejudo so there's not really I feel an interim like if it would be it'd be me and Formiga who are already fighting now so after that I mean I don't know who the interim title would be with um it kind of makes sense you know, if, the, if he's not going to come back and the division's sticking around, it should be a vacant or an interim. But this is the matchup that I feel would be an interim. So maybe it's just weird timing, you know, that he just won the title and he's injured. And this is already set how it is. So, you know, I think um, if this was to happen six months down, you know, then it would probably be in order. So I don't see another person in the division right now that an interim title would make would make sense with, honestly. When you talk about trying to win in like every division, every practice, <laughs> every day, like how do you avoid that becoming like mentally just draining and exhausting to, to, to do that struggle, that focus all the time? No, it is. I mean, fighting <laughs> is mentally and physically exhausting. So that's really what it comes down to. But you have to be willing to go through that as well, you know, on an everyday basis to perform like that in the cage. So, yeah, it's a crazy thing. I think about that all the time. And I just think about the fights, but I'm just like, no, and you know what's hard is like the Wednesday where I'm just like, oh, I don't want to leave my house. Like my dog's on my lap and like me and my wife are talking and like watching TV. So I'm like, got to go fight this dude or this other, you know, five other guys. So, yeah, I mean, it is it is mentally and physically exhausting. Like there's no really way around that, but just about managing it with, I think, a positive attitude, good home life um, for sure. Um so there's that but also i think just liking what you're doing like knowing that's just kind of the process i think some people can do that and you hear people say like you never see me saying like oh this is a grind every day and rise and grind hashtag because i because <laughs> i i'm not rising and grinding like i go to i go to practice with a smile because i'm like i get to do this you know like i think about single moms or something that are like really grinding like they made a lunch and put their kids to school and now they're going to freaking work at a job as a cashier and deal with rude people that they don't like like i kind of think of that so you never see me like saying stuff like that because it's like i get to wake up and like have fun and like do something i like that challenges me every day so yeah that's um i forgot what the question was <laughs> but you know what i mean how important is it to have that goal of Oh, but that's how it doesn't take me out. That's, that's sorry. That's how it doesn't take me out because I just keep a positive, like, um, I keep a positive thing and it keeps me in, it, it always puts me in perspective to live in the like moment of what's happening. You know what I mean? Even right now, even though like we've done this a million times, just to think like, oh, I'm still doing this. This is good. You know, keep it going. I got to train after this, you know, just take every second like that and, and stay, um, just like appreciative of, of, of the moments and while I can still do this. What do you think about your eye coming back? Sorry. No, I think, I think it's great. It's great. It's fun. The guy's a competitor at heart. Um, he's 40. He just had a kid, so he's just inspired. And to be honest, the guy was performing in his last fight. He didn't lose. So he was still performing. So I'm sure he's been trained after that, got the bug. He just did a grappling match against like a 17-year-old phenom. So he's the California kid for a reason, even though he's 40 years old. <laughs> he's still a kid, you know? So he's, uh, I think he's ready to rock. He's, he's active, like the guy, that's what he does. He trains, I'm sure, every day, even though I'm not there, competing with everybody. And to the point of, you know, he's taking it because he is looking to win. Were you, I guess, sorry. You sorry. Oh, I, yeah, how sorry. important is it for the, to have that goal of, of the belt? <coughs> uh, if, if you didn't have that, <coughs> would it be much harder to keep that level of motivation going? No, honestly. It used to be like that. The belt was such like a destination, um, you know, 
and it wasn't really about the journey like it was just this one like magical thing that was going to make everything better um and obviously it will like that's always the goal but it's 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 just it's just a different change like it just means different things you know like the belt used to mean like i was the best and i did this and it was more just like it was me 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 kind of thing um like i would look at the belt while i was running a picture of it it was this like mythical thing but now it's like i've competed with the best i've done this like the best thing about winning the belt would be like celebrating with my wife backstage you know um so like that is that's what motivates me now is like that would be you know what i mean like i used to just be like i'd have a belt and be the best what am i gonna do put on my mantle or something but now when i think about winning i think about like all the people that would make happy and like those instances and and like you know just like going through everything and then achieving it you know so i'm sorry that was weird <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long journey. Yeah, the journey and like the people that sacrifice for you, like now that's what it means to me. And there were still people that sacrificed me even back then. But all I could think about was myself and the belt and like I would be the best, right? I would be known as the best guy. And uh, so it was like it was such an object and a destination I couldn't control. You know, now it's about the journey and it's like the thing that motivates me about that is because oh, it's going to make everybody else, you know, happy and stuff like that and obviously there is that part still deep down like it's going to be a great achievement of self-worth and hard work and all the stuff you hear i think everybody else say why they want to win the belt you know the legacy and all that like that is always going to be a part of why you want to do it but like the motivations just change for it you know i don't like look at a belt anymore i look at like oh it's gonna make her so happy you know and obviously i'm gonna feel really good about it too and even people that have supported me, you know, in the past, you know, family, my mom, you know, like stuff like that. I, I think about that. So it's, it's not like a selfish thing anymore. It's more just like, so it's kind of weird. The belt isn't like my driving force. Like it's kind of like the nucleus of it, but like the other things surround it so much that like, those are really the motivations. And then like, you're always trying to be the best anyway. You know, and you can't really control it, even if you win and lose. Like, you can't control that stuff. Like, you just control, like I said, coming in every day, being appreciative, having gratitude, trying your hardest every day. And then it's like, if you're good enough to win the belt, you are. If you're good enough to win that fight, you are. If the right blow lands for them or you, you know, it happens. So that's all you can really control. So that's what I control every day. You can correct me on the last thing, because like we, we are asking <coughs> fighters to remember their last performance. So if you could comment on your fight again. Oh God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that was great. Like the first thing that came to mind is it was just like a hellish like fight. Like that guy, it was just, I, I never was so physically exhausted after that fight. Um, just like the pace it was at and the way it was fought at with speed, with grappling. Like, you know, when I read people talk about it, like a full display of MMA grappling. And that is all the hardest stuff that you can do. The strength, the grappling, you know, to the really rapid grappling, to the whole, like, it was just crazy. And I was just, it was one of those fights where I was like, man, like, I got so much respect for Ortiz because there was positions in there that, like, I'm always winning. And um, there's positions in there I was like, I'm going to get him there. And, like, it's going to stop. And he wouldn't stop, so I'd have to keep going. And it was one of, the, like, I remember going into the third. I probably lost the second. Um, at the very end of the round, even though I think I was winning that round overall, but it kind of ended weird. So I was like, he got it. So I just remember it was one of those times where it's like, you really need this round. Like you need, you, you need it. You need to do something. You need to get an edge. And you know, those are the fights that build you. Um, you know, when there's something to win, there's like a challenge in front of you. You know, I didn't cruise through that fight by any means. I learned a lot, got to put on a lot of grappling in it, still dropped him with some stand up followed my game plan which was great which I was really disciplined in um as far as just like the grappling base and uh yeah all I can say is it was just it was a, uh, it was a hard fight it was madness and it was one of those it was a it was a great fight that I think I'll always remember as being one of my hardest thank you yeah who's the best athlete in your house <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> it's in question now after my wife played in a charity softball game with professional baseball players. Oh, yeah. And professional <laughs> hockey players and professional football players. So her and all professional athletes, and she hit uh, one shy of the cycle, which is every base. Um, but she only got to hit three times, so it wasn't even possible to hit the yeah. cycle. But she hit a single, double, and a triple. A uh, few RBIs, a few um, out, forced outs or whatever in the outfield. <laughs> so I don't know the baseball terms. but <laughs> So now it's in question. I don't know. I, I don't know. She was playing with, with people you know, that, you, that we consider elite athletes, and uh, she stole the show. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll give it to her. Like, the fact that it's a question is, uh, I think we know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, Thanks, Joe. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe.